Hey guys, it's Ryan. Welcome back to another oral pathology video. And this time we're going to finish up talking about bone lesions by talking about malignancies. And as you can see, for each tissue layer, we ended with malignancies because they are the most lethal and dangerous of the lesions we talk about for each tissue layer. So malignancies manifesting in bone include a lot of the things we've already talked about, like sarcomas, lymphomas, and leukemias. We'll also add in metastatic carcinomas. And numb lip, or paresthesia, is the most frequent presenting symptom and the most frequently tested of the symptoms related to malignancies. So if you see something about numb lip or paresthesia or dysesthesia, something like that, you should immediately think this could be a malignancy that has um, neoplastically invaded a nerve and caused some sort of nerve injury and resulting numbness. So first we have osteosarcoma, and it's a sarcoma of the jaws, and again, sarcoma means a connective tissue malignancy where new bone is produced by tumor cells. So if we're seeing new bone being deposited, we're going to expect that it's going to leave a radiopacity because it'll be more dense. Um, a sunburst pattern is a common term associated with this type of radiopacity, and the five-year survival is only 25 to 40%. So this is a pretty deadly cancer. Treatment would be resection and chemotherapy. And keep in mind, all of these malignancies are going to involve some level of resection surgery and or chemotherapy and radiation therapy. Next, we have chondrosarcoma, which is actually pretty similar to the last one, except it's a sarcoma of jaws where new cartilage is produced by the tumor cells instead of new bone. And that makes sense based on the nomenclature because osteo we know means bone, whereas chondro means cartilage. So the same presentation and treatment as the previous one, and it's more common involving the condyle due to its cartilaginous origin. So the mandibular condyle actually originates separate from the rest of the mandible as its own condylar cartilage. And so its cartilaginous origin predisposes it to this condition more so than, say, the anterior maxilla. Next, we have Ewing's sarcoma, which is a sarcoma of long bones involving these things called round cells. Here's a picture of them. They're basically undifferentiated mesenchymal cells, and they're very round, but a lot of cells are round. So we go by this um, name in particular. It's basically something that I would definitely know associated with Ewing sarcoma. It actually seldom affects the jaws because, like we talked about, it's mostly affecting long bones like the femur. It affects children mostly and involves um, pretty intense swelling, which you can see here in, that, in this axial uh, radiograph and Again, it seldom affects the jaws, so not frequently asked about in the board's exam, but something just to have in the back of your head. And lastly, we have metastatic carcinoma, which I hinted about earlier in this video. And it involves pain, swelling, and especially that cardinal sign, paresthesia, or lip numbness. Um, Ill-defined changes are noted, as you can see in this x-ray, the borders are very diffuse. They're not well-defined at all. There's the, the lower, uh, the inferior border of the mandible has eroded away. Um, so very, very interesting presentation here. And it's a metastatic carcinoma, which means it originated somewhere else in the body and then spread to the jaws, and now it's manifesting there. And this is a spectrum of most to least likely places of origin for metastatic carcinoma. So uh, I haven't seen a board's question involve this, but I still would know this nonetheless because I know exam makers do like to use this information. So breast being the most likely source and then going down from there in terms of cancers that start in these tissues and then move their way to the jaws through metastasis. All right, guys, that's it for this video. Uh, I hope you found it helpful and informative. 
Thanks so much for watching. If you did like this video, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more on oral pathology and other things dentistry. Thanks so much for watching guys and I'll see you all in the next video.